This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create this vector infographic using Inkscape. So we'll go ahead and get started here in Inkscape. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So the first thing we want to do is set up our document for work. So we'll go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set the display units to pixels, which is PX and I'm going to turn off the page border visibility and then close out of that menu. And then we'll go to view. Uh, we'll want custom selected and then view, zoom, oops, uh, view, zoom, zoom in at one to one. Then we'll open the align and distribute menu with this button up here. We'll want last selected chosen from that drop down, And then we'll open up the edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu with that button right there. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a rectangle. So let's grab the squares and rectangles tool. I'm just going to click and drag on the canvas to draw a rectangle like that. And I'll go back to the select tool. And with the select tool selected, I'll go to path, object to path. And then I'll change the width right here. Change that to um, 300, hit enter. Come over here, change the height to 150. And again, just make sure this is pixels, PX set right here. It should be, it should be PX if you set that in the uh, document property. So uh, we're pretty good right there. We have 300 by 150. I'm gonna take the opacity of this and bring this down about in half. And I'm gonna put a number right here in the top left corner. This is gonna represent these little numbers I have here in the bottom of uh, each step. So uh, I'll grab the text tool, which is over here. I'll click on the canvas, I'm just gonna write zero, 01. And I'll come up here to the text editor and I'll choose a different font. I'm gonna look for, uh, the font I'm gonna choose is Lato, the heavy version. It's a free font if you'd like to download it. Um, otherwise, any font should really work. I, I suggest a uh, heavyweight font like this. That should work pretty well. I'm just gonna hold control and just click and drag to make that a little bigger. And maybe I will make that white. Yeah, I'll make that white. And then I wanna click and drag over both of those objects and then click on it again to get the rotation handles. And I'm gonna hold control and take this top arrow here in the center and slide this over to the left two steps while holding control. So we'll go one, two, like that. And now I wanna rotate it counterclockwise two steps. So I'll hold control and grab this bottom right arrow and rotate it around two steps by going one, two, just like that. And then we can click off of the graphic and deselect everything. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, well, let me zoom in on this actually so you can see it better. I'm just going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel to zoom in. I'm going to take this black rectangle right here and I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D on the keyboard. And I'll make that red and I'll hold control and just click and drag this straight down, maybe about that far. And I want to lower that beneath the black square and the number. So I'm going to come over here to where it says lower selection to the bottom. Go ahead and click on that. And I want to grab the Bezier pen over here. And uh, from up here in the snapping menu, we're gonna want snap to cusp nodes. We're gonna want that turned on for this. So I'm gonna snap the cursor to this corner and click, then snap it to that corner and then over here and then back to the starting point. And I'll go to the select tool, hold shift, click on the red shape and go to path union. And what I'll do now is I'm gonna grab the uh, the Bezier pen again, which is over here. You press B on the keyboard as a shortcut. And I'm gonna draw another shape going vertically right here, which is gonna represent this part of the step right there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start right here at this corner, snap it onto that corner and click, and then hold control and bring this red line straight out so it's running parallel with the edge of this red uh, step right here. And you'll notice if you hold control, it should lock to that same proportion. You'll notice it's going at negative 30 degrees. It'll say down here, in the bottom right there. It'll tell you what degrees it's at. It should say negative 30. I'm gonna bring it out about that far and then click. Still holding control, I'm gonna bring this line straight up to about here and then click. And then while still holding control, I'm gonna bring this line out to about here. We're gonna want this one running at 150 degrees or running parallel with the edge of this black step right here. So bring it up out about that much and click. I'm gonna bring it out pretty far past the corner right here. We're gonna make sure it just passes that corner and then bring it down back to the starting point. We can let go of control, bring it back to the starting point and then click right there. And I'm gonna make that red as well. I'm gonna get rid of the black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X and I'll bring the opacity of that down in half as well. And what I wanna do now is I wanna make this straight now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, I'm gonna to snap to this corner here on the inside then hold control and bring this line going straight up all the way through and then click. And we can let go of control and just finish this shape up going around the outside of everything back to the starting point. 
Then we can go to the Select tool, hold Shift, click on this red shape, and go to Path, Difference. And now we have that object set. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Control D. And I'm going to grab the object down here by the lower left corner. I'm just going to snap this over here to this corner like that. And what I'll do now is I'll go back to the Bezier pen. And I'll snap to this corner and come over to this corner, up to this top, uh, top right corner, and then over to this top right corner, back to the starting point, and click. And now we can go back to the Select tool. And I'm going to make this, I'm just going to make this blue for now. I'm going to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking on the X. Bring the opacity down a little bit. And I'm going to take this red shape over here. I'm just going to press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. Uh, that we don't need that anymore. That was just a reference point. So what we can do now is we have this all set. So we should just start coloring this in. So I'm going to click and drag over everything and bring the opacity of it all the way up. And if you notice here, I made this first step red, so I'm going to go with that. I'm going to click on this black shape right here, and I'm going to make this flat red. And I'm going to click on this bottom step over here and make this a, a lighter shade of red. I'm going to come over to the Fill tab, and under the HSL tab, I'll take this L column and slide that to the right a little bit to make that lighter like that. That's good. I'll take this shape right here. I want to make that the same, sh uh, same light red shade that this is. So I'll grab the uh, Dropper tool and then just click on that. Go back to the select tool, take this blue shape, and I'm going to make this a darker red. So maybe something like that. And that's pretty good right there. Um, if you notice, I put a little bit of like a shadow being casted down over here. So I'm going to create that next. So I'll come over here to the Bezier pen, snap to this corner right here, and then just hold control and bring this line out uh, at a negative 135 degree angle. Oh, no, I'm sorry, at a negative 150 degree angle. It should be running parallel with this red edge right here. Go ahead and click. And then all the way around through the outside. Or you know what? Through the inside of the dark shape. And then back through the inside of here. And then back to the starting point. And by the way, you could press delete on the keyboard to, to uh, delete the previous uh, step in case you make an error with the Bezier pen. Oops, I didn't connect that. There we go. And what I'm going to do now is grab the select tool and take this main red shape right here. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting control D and I'll hold shift, click on that Bezier shape we just created and go to path intersection. And I just want to lower that. So it goes beneath these two objects right here. So I'll click the button that says lower selection one step. I'll click that once, twice, and there we go. And I want to make that red and I want to take the L row and slide that to the left just a tad to make that a little darker. And I want to get rid of that black outline by holding shift and clicking the X. And there you have that. I might even take this number one, just shift this over a little bit like that. And maybe I'll take this red, I'll make this a little darker. Maybe I'll lighten this up a little bit. You can adjust it as you see fit. So what I'm going to do now is, let me zoom out a little bit by holding control and rolling down the mouse wheel. We pretty much have uh, the template set for the rest of the steps. So I'm just going to click and drag over all of this and group it all together with the button that says Group Selected Objects. And I'm going to duplicate it by hitting Control D on the keyboard. And I'm going to grab the object over here on the left. And I'm going to take this bottom left corner and snap it onto this top, top corner over here. So I'm just going to grab this object and snap it up top, just like that. And if you notice here, I colored this one in blue. So I'm going to do that next. Uh, what I'm going to do is ungroup this now. I'm going to hit the Ungroup button, click off of it to deselect everything. And I'm going to grab the text tool and just change this to a number two first. When you hover the cursor over the number, it should light up. And you'll see the cursor in there. Mine started out between the zero and the one. So I'm just going to arrow over, delete, and write in number two. Then we go back to the select tool. I'm going to click on this red shape, hold shift, click on this darker red shape right next to it. And I'll choose a shade of blue down here from the color picker. Maybe I'll go with something like that. And uh, I'll hold shift, click on this larger blue shape to deselect it so we just have this shadow shape selected and I'm going to take the L row and slide that to the left a little bit to make that darker. And I'll take this shape down here, hold shift, click on this other light red shape right there. I'll grab the dropper and make that the same shade of blue, but then take the L row and slide that to the right to make that lighter like that. Go back to the select tool, grab uh, this dark red piece right there, press, um, press on the uh, dropper tool. Make that the same shade of blue. Slide the L row to the uh, to the left to make that darker. 
and that's pretty good. We go back to the select tool, and I'm just going to repeat these steps over and over again. We're going to do yellow and then light blue. I'm going to click on this. I'm actually I'm going to click on the red object and duplicate that again by hitting Control D, and again just snap this up top, ungroup everything, click off of it to deselect everything. I'm going to take this number right there, click on that, and then go over to the text tool, change that to the number two, and go back to the select tool. I will then uh, click on this red shape, hold shift, click on the other red shape, and I'll make this a shade of yellow. Actually, I'll come over here and slide this to the left a little bit to make that more orangish. Click off of that to deselect. Take this shape right here and make that a little darker, like that. Then I'll take this light red shape right here, hold shift, click on the other light red shape, and I'll make that one yellow. Maybe I'll slide that to the right a little bit to make that a little lighter. And maybe I will click on that and lighten that up a little bit. I went a little too far with the orange there. I think that's pretty good. I'll have to lighten that up as well. You can adjust these as you see fit. It's hard for me to uh, give you exact... I mean, I guess I could give you the exact numbers right here, FB7900, but it's best to just play with it yourself and get a feel for how the colors work. Um, I'll click on this red shape now, go to the dropper tool, click on this orange shape right here. I'll make that a little darker. Maybe I'll add a splash of red to that. That looks pretty good. And again, we got to go back to the text tool. Click on that and then just change that to a number three. Go back to the select tool and one more would be this light blue shape right there so i'll click on this uh, red object hit Control d snap it up top right here ungroup it click off of it to deselect uh, the steps should be pretty uh self-explanatory at this at this point click on that hold shift click on that uh, make this light blue deselect this one by holding shift and clicking on it and make that one a little darker Click on the two red, the light red shapes right there. Grab the dropper, make them lighter. Make, lighten that up a little bit. Let me go back to the select tool and make that. That's a little too, little too dark. That's pretty good now. I'll uh, take that red shape right there. Grab the dropper, make that a little darker. And all we have to do now is put a little piece up top here. Actually, you know what? I have to make that the number four. So I'll go back to the text tool, click on that, and change that to a four. And now we just got to put this little uh, this little piece up top here to finish this thing off. So what I'm going to do is go to the select tool. I'll take this light blue sh piece right here that runs vertical. I'll duplicate that by hitting Control D, and I'll snap this over here to the right side so we can use that as a reference point. And I'll go back to the uh, Bezier pen and just draw a shape that connects those corners together of those two light light blue vertical shapes right there. Back to the starting point. I'll go to the dropper tool, make that the same shade of blue this is. Go back to the select tool, maybe lighten that up a little bit. Hold shift and uh, actually, no, I gotta come back over here. Hold shift and click on this X on the far left to get rid of that. And now we can go back, uh, we can go back over here to this shape and just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And now, because we don't need that anymore. And let me zoom into 100%. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out to 100%. You'll see we have the steps finished. So all I have to do now is put these little text labels in here, which should be pretty self-explanatory beyond this part right here. I'll explain these little lines and circles for you real quick. What I'll do is I'll grab the circles and ellipses tool. I'll hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And then I want to convert that to a path by going to Path, Object to Path, and I'm going to make that a, sh uh, a dark shade of gray. Grab the select tool. I'm going to zoom in a little more. Again, I'm just holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel to zoom in. Put this down here. Hold control and shift to make that a little smaller. Right down there by the number one. And what I want to do now is turn on this button that says snap to an item's uh, rotation center. This is going to make it so that we can snap the cursor to the center of an object. And that's what we're going to want to do. We want this line to be running directly through the center of that circle. So. I'll grab the Bezier pen, I'll snap to the center right there and click, hold control, bring this line straight up, and then click and then hold control again, bring it straight out to the left like that, and hit enter to finish it up. I'm going to change the stroke style tab, change that to pixels, 
I'm going to make that a little thicker, maybe three. That's pretty good. And I want to make that the same shade of dark gray that this is, which I believe was this third one in over here. I'm just going to hold shift and click on that shade. If you just click on it, it'll fill in that whole area, which we don't want. you got to hold shift. You know what? There we go. Change that to three. got to hold shift and then click on it. I'll go back to the select tool. I want to take that little circle right there and duplicate that by hitting control D and snap that to the center right there like that. That's good. And now we can just add some text right here. I'm going to grab the text tool. I'm just going to type in, um, for this one, I just grabbed some social media icons. I figured that'd be a good, just a, like a dummy example to use. I'll just write um, for here. I'll just write sample text. I'm going to change the font to uh, Leto. Again, any font, any font should really work here. I'll make this a lighter shade of gray, maybe like that. Hold control and just scale that down. And I'm gonna duplicate that by hitting control D. Hold control and bring this down here. And I'll hold control and scale that down a little bit. And then I'll just go back to the text tool and add some more dummy text in there. Sample text. And you get the idea. So. What I'll do now is go back to the select tool. I'm gonna to hold shift and click on all of these elements, the lines, the circles, the text, group it all together by hitting control G on the keyboard. That's another shortcut to group instead of coming over here and using the grouping buttons. And now we can just duplicate it by hitting control D, click and drag it over here, control D, click and drag this over here, control D, and then over there. And now you can just go and ungroup all of these and go and edit the text as you see fit. Ungroup that one, let me zoom out. And, and you can, as you can see, we are finished. We have created our steps infographic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.